Hello, in this video I want to look at the terms of trade. Terms of trade are calculated by an index of export prices divided by an index of import prices. Terms of trade are about the ratio between the price of the goods that a country exports compared to the price of goods that the country imports. You see countries specialise and exports certain things and will need the earnings from those exports to be able to pay for the imports it wishes to buy. If terms of trade for a country improves, it would mean that this would increase. The ex if export prices increased relative to import prices, then you can see that this calculation, this fraction if you like, becomes more top-heavy. Uh, export prices go up compared to import prices, it's good for a country because uh, with the things that they sell, they export, they, are, they earn more money, they are able to buy in a greater amount of imports. Alternatively, if import prices rose relative to export prices, countries would suffer because with the exports that they make, they would no longer be able to buy in the same quantity of imports and that must have an effect on the standards of living for people in the country. Now I want to show you a photograph that I took um, quite a long time ago, about 10 years ago, um, in Greece. It was a photograph from a demonstration. I'm going to hold it up to the camera and you should be able to, have a, you should be able to see that this is a photograph of crates and crates of lemons. Now this was in a, in, in a small town in southern Greece and there is a, a notice attached to the crates of lemons in Greek and what this notice is saying is it's, it's a protest by lemon farmers. Uh, this was a lemon growing part of Greece and the, and, and the notice basically says that, um, I'm just going to hold it there while I tell you what it says, it says that 10 years earlier, 10 years earlier than this photograph and this demonstration was happening, 10 years earlier it took us 10 tons of lemons to be exported to be able to buy an imported agricultural pickup truck, like an agricultural vehicle. Now, says the notice, it takes us 100 tons of lemon exports to be able to buy the imported pickup truck. Okay. What the farmers were complaining about was a deterioration in the terms of trade. What the farmers were saying was, of course, as I just said, that previously they had been able to grow and sell their export of lemons, and it took them 10 tons of exports to be able to get enough money to be able to buy an imported car. No cars are made in Greece. All agricultural pickup trucks get imported. They, of course, they didn't have to. That's not the only thing that's being imported into Greece, and lemons aren't the only export. export. But, but this was a good example. 10 tons of exports of lemons uh, to buy one foreign pickup truck. And the, and the price of lemons must have dropped so much compared to the price of the, the cars, the trucks, that, that it now they were complaining, now they had to work 10 times harder. They had to, to sell 100 tons of lemons to be able to get that same pickup truck. They didn't use the phrase terms of trade, but you can see that what had happened to those farmers was there was a worsening of the terms of trade. And, and the thing that Greece, that part of Greece was exporting its price had fallen. If you like, the export price had fallen and worsening the terms of trade and they needed to sell more exports to buy the same amount of imports. Okay, so that would be a worsening of the terms of trade. Countries do not want a worsening of the terms of trade. But there's another point with that example is of course that lemons are an agricultural good, it's a commodity, and manufactured uh, vehicles like pickup trucks and cars are not commodities, they are manufactured goods. And over time, over a long period of time, it's countries that produce um, agricultural goods and, and, and other commodities that tend to have suffered because historically the price of commodities has not been, uh, has not kept up with manufactured goods. And that has meant that countries that rely broadly on the exports of commodities have broadly suffered with worsening uh, terms of trade because the thing that they are exporting has, has not kept up in price with the thing 
that they would be wanting to import. Saying that, in the, in the very recent uh, year or two, of, 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 of the last year or two, uh, commodity prices have been high, and a lot of people predict that commodity prices will do, will do well. Take an oil exporting country. Right now, as I speak, oil prices are something like $125 a barrel. Well, that's quite high, and so if you're an oil exporting country, well, your exports are quite good at the moment, and you'll be able to import a lot more. Um, you had, have had uh, an improvement in the terms of trade as your oil prices have gone up, your exports have gone up in price. Right, one more thing about terms of trade. Um, trade will only take place if the terms of trade lie within the opportunity cost ratios of production. I'm going to say that again. Trade will only take place between two countries if the terms of trade lie within the opportunity cost ratios of production for those countries. Let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so, one more thing to tell you about with terms of trade, and that is that the terms of trade must lie between the opportunity cost ratios for trade to even take place. Let me say that again. Terms of trade have to lie between the opportunity cost ratios for two countries if trade is to take place at all anyway. Let me illustrate this with an example. Imagine that there are only two things made in the world, two products, cars and cocoa beans. And imagine there are only two countries in the world, the UK and Uganda. Incidentally, Uganda is the biggest producer of cocoa beans in the world, so there's a little bit of <coughs> truth there. Right, this chart I'm about to fill in tells us the hours needed to make one unit of cars and cocoa. Let's imagine in the UK it takes 20 hours to make a car, and in Uganda it only takes 16 hours to make a car. And let's imagine that in the UK, a unit of cocoa beans, that might be a ton of cocoa beans or something, takes five hours to make, to grow, and in Uganda, it only takes two hours to grow. Now, if you've learned absolute advantage, you'll know that Uganda has the absolute advantage in the production of both cars and cocoa, because they can make them at a lower cost. And you can see, perhaps, comparative advantage there as well. But this video is about terms of trade, so I want to... Once you've, you know, pause the video now and, and write down that, that chart because, because we're going to take this information that's here on the table and we're going to put it on a graph and you're going to see what I mean when I say terms of trade have to lie between opportunity cost ratios. Okay, so just, I'm just going to pause for a minute while you look at that. Okay, right, now I'm going to rub that out because I'm going to draw it on a graph. So. We don't know the total amount of resources available in the two countries, the UK and Uganda, but what we can say, so I can't draw the actual PPFs, but what I, what I can draw is this. Cars and cocoa. And I can tell you that in the UK, Every time they made a car, which if you remember was 20 hours, they could have made four units of cocoa. Why? Because it took five hours to make a unit of cocoa. So with every 20 hours they've got available in their limited resources, they could make one car, or they could make four cocos with 20 hours. So although I'm not suggesting that they can only make one car, and not two cars, I'm not saying this is the PPF, but this shows the opportunity cost ratio between producing cars and producing cocoa in the UK, one to four. Now in Uganda, where it would take 16 hours to make a, a, a car, or two hours to make a cocoa, then for every car they make, it takes 16 hours, they could have made, they could have made eight units of cocoa with 16 hours. So the, so the choice, if you like, the opportunity cost ratio is, shall we make a car or eight units of cocoa in Uganda, which is this one, I'm going to put U for Uganda, and in Britain it was, shall we make a car or shall we make four units of cocoa beans? This is the UK. Now the terms of trade, the terms of trade suggest that trade will only take place if 
the terms of trade lie in this range. What do I mean by that? Let's imagine that the price, the terms of trade that is settled upon is here. The price finally settled on is that one car will equal the same price as six cocos. Let's imagine that the UK, because it has comparative advantage in car production, is making cars and trading with Uganda for cocoa, where, where, Ugan, where and Uganda makes that cocoa. The price has to lie, the terms of trade, the relative price of cars and cocoa must lie in this range. Why is that? I'm suggesting that maybe this would be the price. Six cocos for one car. Why? Because if the price tried, if, if one of the sides wanted the price to be here, where one car had to be given up for three cocos, well, that might suit Britain making, uh, that might suit Britain making, uh, sorry, Uganda making cocoa, because they would very much like to take a car for every three cocos they sell. But Britain wouldn't accept this. Britain would say, no, we're not giving away one of our cars for just three of your cocos, because we can make four cocos every time we give up a car ourselves. Why would we export one of our cars for just three of your cocos? And this would be unacceptable to the UK. And then beyond this point, it would be unacceptable to Uganda. Uganda, let's say, um, Uganda, let's say that Britain wanted a price of 10 cocos for every car it sells. Uganda would say, no, this isn't acceptable. We can make our own cars by giving up eight cocos. So why would we sell to you 10 cocos just to, just to, uh, just to get one of your cars? No. So the only range of, of prices that would be acceptable, the only range of terms of trade that would be acceptable lie within this range, acceptable to both sides for trade to go ahead. If the price, if the relative price of cars to cocos was outside of this range, in my example, of one car being be worth between four and eight cocos, if it was outside of that range, one of the two countries would not be willing to trade. The terms of trade for trade to happen have to lie in that range. Well, I hope I haven't left you even more confused uh, than you were at the start of the video. I hope that makes sense. I think it did. And um, thank you very much. Okay, that's it.